Okay, back at it again. Here with some more Fire in the Lake. We are cranking through cards. Doing pretty good. Shorter videos. You don't get through so many cards. Probably because I blather on too much. But look, we got through 22 already. We have 52 left in the deck. It's not a guarantee that we'll see all 52. So I think, I think we're doing pretty good. As always, we try to, or I aim for, like, error-free play, but, you know, that just never really happens, and uh, luckily I have people watching these videos, and I pick up some of the errors myself. So the very first one we're going to do is we're going to fix the fact that I did an advise action. The very last action I think I did, right, was an advise action, and I did not add aid. So aid is, like, real important. So let's find that aid. There it is. Um, because we've got to keep building this up. So it gets plus six aid here. It's going to take it to 14. Cool. Another error that was pointed out to me was that during the last coup round, uh, when we had the opportunity for Arvin and the U.S. to pacify uh, various provinces or cities, I pacified Contum to active, and it actually could not have gone there because at the time I had no police cubes there because I believe the VC had like successfully subverted away the police, which was you know smart on the VC's part. So we're going to adjust that towards neutral again. And we're going to give back six resources to um, Arvin, because that would have cost them six resources to do that. The same viewer who pointed that out also reminded me of an important rule, which is that the U.S. cannot spend Arvin resources past the econ level. I don't think we've ever done it. I think we've gotten close. Or maybe I did spend it down to 12 or something. That might have been around where I accidentally spent below their econ. Um, that was probably a mistake. Um, try not to do that in the future, but basically that's like a little rule here so that the U.S. can't just bankrupt Arvin, because that could be one viable strategy is just to bankrupt your, 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 technically your partner if you don't want them to do things or like make moves if you're already in the lead. So the econ marker is sort of like the hard limit for the U.S. to spend, so we can spend all the way up to 15. Arvin can keep spending all the way down to zero, they can do whatever they want, but the U.S. cannot spend past the econ marker. Um, so yeah, gonna try to not do that in the future. <laughs> I think, I think we're doing pretty good. Like, I'm honestly, I'm talking a lot, and I'm not, like, if I was doing this quietly in a solo play, I would probably have more active thought and look things over more. But I'm trying to make this, you know, snappy and, and do stuff. So I feel like we're doing pretty good. Pretty good. So if you see more errors, please keep pointing them out. I don't think this did, like, a ton of damage, honestly. I don't think, I mean, obviously the VC could have rallied here or something, but I honestly don't think it's been too impactful. The aid thing we caught, you know, in time, and that's totally fine. So let's keep going, let's keep going. Right now we have uh, NVA and Arvin are up to play. And we've got the bombing pause as our current event. So let's take a look at this one. This one is one that anybody can go for. It is set any two spaces to passive support, patronage plus two, no airstrike until the coup round. This is a momentum card. So it's one of those that lasts until the next coup. I mean, no airstrike is like really good because honestly we gotta start making moves with the NVA and I think we're gonna start doing that because these troops cubes are just really vulnerable to airstrikes and they can just be removed very quickly. Um, but honestly, I don't want to take an event to do that. If this was like the first thing the NVA could do, I would be more into it, but we've already played a few cards in this coup round. I mean, this coup round could go on for a while and I'll be like, oh, really rue the day. Um, then I didn't take that, you know, no airstrikes. But honestly, setting places to passive support, not... I guess I could set any two. So I could take an active support and move it to passive, which is which is kind of nice. I guess I could do that. Um, and, and patronage, don't really want to give the Arvin more patronage. And the airstrike just isn't worth it to me as the NBA player. I mean, it probably will be because I'm going to start moving troops in. But I'm going to say right now, we're just going to hold off on that. I think we're going to hold off on that. Okay, so we're up first. Arvin could go next. Arvin might want that, but I don't know if they want it enough to take the event. Um, especially because they could, well, if they pass, they won't go first on the next card either. So, But the U.S. will probably want that capability. Lots and lots of things to think about. Okay, what does NBA want to do? They want to kind of get in the game. Unfortunately, their trail just keeps getting knocked the hell down. They can't ever seem to build it back up. So that would be one advantage of like stopping airstrikes. They could actually build the trail up. But we've done pretty good without it, honestly. Like, usually it's really nice to get the trail at a high value, but I think we've done okay. I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to do a good old op and special. Let's go ahead and pull up our little sheet here. Um, I think what we're going to want to do is rally and infiltrate. And I'll tell you why. Because I think it's time for us to start moving into country and to um, start making our presence known. Really get put the, put the U.S. on the back here where they've been dealing a lot with the VC but they have not been dealing at all with the NBA so let's start let's start showing up 
I do want to note one other thing. I did count. We could do our uh, Vietnamization. There is not. Uh, there is less than twenty U.S. troops on the map. I think by like one because we've actually put some in the casualties. So Vietnamization is on the board. Uh, this one, I think we could do too. I could count that up. So Tet could go. The Easter offensive. More troops than U.S. troops. This one I don't know about. I don't know if we have more NVA troops than U.S. troops right now. Because I don't think there's three, six, what's that, 10, 15. Yeah, I don't think that's enough. 15, oh, there's 18. It might just be, I don't think it's quite enough. I think we would need a few more cubes and then we could do the Easter offensive. Which would be nice because the free marches, the NVA troops unlocks with no U.S. Army. They move one space. Uh, and then all... Was that free attack, which is, you know, pretty interesting. That could be really good if you set yourself up for it in the right way, but we're not quite there yet. We could be close, but we're not quite there. I think what we're going to do is we're going to march and we're going to infiltrate. Now, unfortunately, Tainan got totally taken out. It's usually a great place for the for NVA to, like, move in and, like, infiltrate and take things over. So I think instead what we're going to do is we're going to march. So what does that cost us? Per non-lock destination. One resource. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw one in Cambodia. I'm going to actually march some gorillas down here and start building bases up there. I'm going to send a guy from the Parrot's Beak out. So actually, no, we'll march to the fish hook. There we go. There, let's, that's using our brain. I have a bunch of troops here. What I want to do is I want to go to Quang Ten, and I think I'm... Do I want to... I can't outnumber the VC here. I could outnumber the VC here, but I don't really want a gorilla. I want a base. That's like... The thing I really want is to get bases. And I can move into Bend Din. There's like this Southern Laos that you touch in a lot of really important places, right? The one thing though is the lowlands, so it's going to be easier to sweep and fight there. It's a lot harder to do so in the mountain region, but I kind of need to concentrate to, to make them moves. Yeah, so we're going to do that. So we're going to march also to the here. Okay, and I could march a gorilla onto a lock for free, but I've already got all the LOCs, except for this one. I could add I could add more here to like secure the roots, which actually may not be like a terrible idea. That may not be like the worst idea possible. Hmm. Yeah, because I kind of I've like locked up a lot of these locks. I've done a good job actually getting my gorillas out. That's one thing I usually don't do all the time in games, but uh, I did it here. So what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five. So we need to bring six cubes in to make this work, to make the infiltrate work. So we'll bring in uh, so let's actually like tidy this up a little bit. Do, do, do. Make way for your NVA cousins. All right. Well, here's old, here's five cubes and six. All right, so now we have control because we outnumber all those pieces. That's super hot for us. I guess I could try to go into Quang Nam, but I need to bring gorillas in with me if I'm gonna do that so I can build bases because I can't do, I can only build a base with a gorilla, right? So that actually might be a good thing to do here. So maybe we'll move these three cubes up to here. Let's go bring these three cubes up here. Let's go and bring, let's just do it. Let's just bring a whole kit and caboodle in. And then I'll bring in three gorillas. So I can actually pick from Central Laos because it's just the destination spot you pay for. So I should put a pawn here, right? Okay, so it's one, two, and then we're going to march down three, four. So four resources total. So we're down to 14. I'm going to take a gorilla and move him down here. I take a gorilla and move it into the fish hunk. That's pretty hot. I could move cubes out here. I don't think that's, like, the greatest idea. I need, I need more cubes. I need more than three to, like, go in and make a, make a ruckus, right? All right, so let's take a look at Infiltrate, because I don't think I've actually used that too much. In one or two spaces, we're an NVA base, or the NVA is greater than the VC. Okay, so we have a place like that. If it's a base space, we can place NVA troops up to trail plus bases, and if desired, replace gorillas with troops. We'll probably actually put some cubes down the south. And then if we have more NVA than VC, opposition will level to neutral and replace one VC, even a tunnel space, with NVA. So we're going to do that here. This is kind of how we, like, hedge our... Um, our VC counter, our VC counterparts here, like keeping them from getting all the opposition that they need, and they were getting pretty close too, right? They had a, they had a lot going on, so we're actually going to return that to available, and we're going to give ourselves a base. Oh yeah, that's hot. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we'll do that. 
here. I don't need to worry about that kind of stuff. I will, that was one infiltrate space. And then we're gonna infiltrate also down here. So I think I get what, bases plus trail value? Trail plus bases, yeah. Unfortunately our trail is one and we have two bases so I'll bring three cubes down there. It would have been nice, honestly, if I had more cubes down here to make moves in the south to really like draw away the US and to like basically just be putting uh, offense on all parts of the map because then we split their forces effectively. But they don't have a ton of cubes down here. So if I can get just even a few more of these cubes, or even move in these guys, that actually could be enough to really put the pressure on them down here. Uh, they do have quite a few cubes in the north, but I want them to get out of the cities, and if they pull out of way, then they're going to have to worry about their governance, and I have to worry about it too as the NVA, but I, I want to put them on some pressure here. I want to put pressure on them. Okay, so we did that. That looks good. I don't think I want to do any other marching. Move three gorillas here. we got a base here now. We're, we're doing great. I could bring two gorillas into Kuang Ten, honestly, and then throw down another base, but I already have a million bases out. And you kind of want to keep bases in central and southern Laos because that allows you to get money. Or Laos and Cambodia, what am I saying? Laos and Cambodia, because that's how you get money, um, which is hot. But you also, yeah, yeah, I like it though. I like being able to take a base away from the uh, BC and also do that. Okay. Enough blathering and faction play. Op plus special. Okay, so the Arvin could either do a limited op or take the event. See, they don't really want to do this card now because now the NBA has moved into country and they kind of want the U.S. to use the airstrike ability because that's a really effective way to, have, to just start just wiping out a bunch of troops. Uh, they would like the patronage. They would like to maybe set some places to passive support to keep the U.S. Uh, hurting, but the U.S. has already like lost a lot of support here because of that one event that we took that let them just sort of ravage the coast, right? Oh yeah, these are both neutral. That's huge. Um, so I don't, I'm not too worried about that. I don't love the fact that I have a limited op opportunity. I could pass and hope that the U S would just take this capability because this capability is pretty good. I don't know if the U S now wants to, because the NVA has moved in so heavily, but honestly, this is such a great capability that it'd be really hard to pass that up. If I was the Arvin though, and I had a limited op, what would I even want to do? Uh, so they really do need other good stuff. I guess I could sweep somewhere. Sweeping is good. Assert more coin control somewhere. I do have a bunch of pieces here that just don't need to be here anymore. Um, oh, this is a decline. So many spam calls. I get a lot of spam calls. Anybody else noticing that on their phone? Just tons and tons of spam calls. Anyway. Um, side note. Okay. Would I want to sweep? I don't want to leave Hue because I actually do eventually want to try to govern there. I am worried about Da Nang. I probably should be patrolling. Let's get real. I should be patrolling because there's just way too many guys on locks. And that sucks. Uh, what would patrol let us do? I think they would let us... Can, can we pick more than one? What would we do? Move any Arvin cubes to or along adjacent locks or cities. Stopping any search and send on each log activate. So this is one of those really weird things where we could only pick one space, but patrol doesn't pick spaces. I don't think so I don't know how that exactly would work with a limited op I've actually never thought about that isn't that weird I've played this game a lot and I've never had a, an occasion to be like well geez would a patrol only do like this much let's take a look does it say it does not operations Sorry, I'm having a lot of dead air here. You know, I don't see it, and I don't really want to spend a bunch of time looking. So I think patrol is just one of those fun little, like, you can do it anything, because it does cost three resources totals. I can choose any LOCs or cities, so move any Arvin cubes along adjacent LOCs. So I bet I can pick, like, one city and then patrol out from it. So that's, that's how I'll rule that. Um which I think I'm gonna do anyway. So it's gonna cost three resources total. I'm into that. Let's go ahead and say you're doing it. Oh, he is doing limited up. We're gonna patrol out of, oh, I should probably patrol out of Kwai Nan and get rid of some of this stuff. Cause man, there's just a ton of guys around really. 
and there's only one guy here in Contum, but I really need to get up to like Route 14. Oh man, there's just guys here and here, and I don't really want to take cubes out of way. But honestly, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to govern here, and I need to build support too. Oh yuck, that event really kind of smashed up my Huey plan. So I think what we're going to do is we're not going to worry about it too much. We're going to just patrol out of Huey. So we'll send a cube here. We'll send a cube here. All right. We have to stop at Insurgents, then on each LOC, activate one Gorilla for each Arvin cube there, and if desired, free assault on one lock. And we get a free assault, and in each space, remove one active enemy piece uh, per two troops in jungle lowland three, and any two Arvin cubes in city or LOC. So I need two Arvin cubes to actually like do a free assault. Oh, that's, a, that's kind of annoying. I guess I could move all the police out. That would That's not great either. Huh, and I can move anything with patrol, right? Yeah, Arvin cubes, yep, yep, yep. I don't love that plan. I don't love that plan, unfortunately. I didn't realize it took two cubes. Let's see, Arvin's just not as good at fighting, but exposing him is, is pretty good. So, oh, no, no. Undo. Active, okay. That's pretty good on its own merits because then we can basically uh, secure these from sabotage and uh, hopefully maybe some, at some point get another cube out there and start, and start wrecking face. Okay. Maybe might have been better to pass there, I don't know. And draw a card. All right, Cobras. Uh, this is a capability card, so the unshaded one is the good side for the good guys, I guess, or the US Arvin. Two US Arvin sweep spaces, each remove one active, untunneled enemy, troops first, bases last. So each time you sweep, you get to remove something. And that's actually great, because it's US or Arvin sweep spaces. It's like really hot, that helps out both guys. I do like that a lot, and honestly, it's such a good one. And the negative side is uh, each U.S. assault space, one U.S. troop to casualties on a die roll of one to three, which is not great. We don't want to have casualties at all, even like a possibility of them. And if I don't take this event, uh, the BC might want to take this event. So I think I will take this event because I do love capabilities, and this is actually a pretty good one. So let's go to our markers. Oh, pieces, there we go. Uh, events, gotta drag this out and then drag this out because it's fun. Uh, cobras, Cobras. All right, here we go, boom, so many capabilities. I'm just really doing it. All right, in two sweep spaces we can move one. That's US or Arvin, that's actually really, really helpful. I thought it was just the US at first, it's actually Arvin too, that's great. All right, VC gets to do an op and a special. What is, now they're pretty upset here. They actually had like a little good thing going here with the bases. And then the VC or the NBA just comes in and just takes it over. Um, how are they doing on resources? They got eights. So they probably want to start taxing again at some point. And they can't even tax here, I don't think, because they don't have control over it. Hmm, hmm. They do want to build up here. How many gorillas do we have? We have seven. And the cities are open. This is pretty much a great opportunity to do some subverts, which I think is a great idea. Do want to keep building up our negative stuff though that's kind of an annoying thing we, we were so close and we kind of do want to do that as the vc <sighs> subvert is we do the rally march or terror how do, can we tax up to four to underground vc and no coin control so we can still tax in quantum that's fine it would drop it down to neutral which is like really annoying i think we're gonna rally and then subvert. I think that's what we're gonna do. One or two spaces. Yeah, because the cities are open, so this is a great time to like come in and start doing things. Cause like Denang is very, very open. I think that is a great idea for us. Okay. So we'll rally in Denang. Let's go ahead and rally in, oh yeah, probably should rally in Huey. Even though there's just so many US troops here, but this is just one of those things where like, it's annoying. The US is gonna have to deal with it. Although they do get sweep, they expose me. Mm. So what does that do again? It's like every, each sweep space removes one active. So even if they sweep, they could get rid of it. So unfortunately that's, that's uh, that kind of makes that less useful. Uh, 
I uh, don't know. Ooh, I could put a base up here. That could be really good. Honestly, that could be good. We might do that. Put a base there. Rally there. We're good here. I could rally here again. I, I kind of do want to just put, be putting pressure. And honestly, I'm going to rally and tain in. And this could probably do some damage. These are all great. Ooh, here we go. All right, so we'll rally in these four spaces. We got one, two, three, four, because I don't want to spend all my money. We're going to need to tax soon. I think we're going to have to do the tax next round, next time we can. And then we're going to subvert. Where am I going to subvert? Well, let's go ahead. We paid our four. So let's go ahead and put some gorillas out. So let's replace two of these with a base. Let's put one in here in Da Nang. We're going to put one in Kin Fong, and we're going to put one in Tainan. Okay, hot. This sets us up pretty nicely. We're going to subvert in Kin Fong and Da Nang. Here I'm going to just replace one for one, because there's only one cube there, right? So I'm going to take this guy, return to available, and get a gorilla. I think subvert actually activates a gorilla, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. It just has to be underground. This is hot. In space, remove two cubes, replace it with one patron for two pieces removed. All right. So we did that. You know, I wondered if that's if that's a cumulative effect, because I might be doing that here as well. That's another good question. I, I thought I knew, I thought I had a pretty good grasp on it. Okay. Yes, for every two pieces removed total. So if we remove one more, we do get to drop the patronage, which I think is a really hot move. Because we're going to do that here. We're going to subvert in Ken Fong. Now, I could get rid of two of these and just have one. I think what we'll do instead is just do one for one. Just because it, eh, but they could just sweep. And that's like really annoying. But if I only, if I get rid of two, they could still sweep and then mark me out. And it doesn't really help me that much. So yeah, we'll make this, we'll make this a hard choice. Okay. Return to available. Okay. We did that. We got a guy there. He didn't have to do anything. We did that. And so we did We did remove two cubes, so we dropped the patronage down. What, one? Yeah, for two. So we dropped the patronage down one. Okay, cool. In faction play, they did that. All right, well, we're going to have to cut this one short because... Um, I have to, I'm actually taking care, I have a little baby now, I have a four month old baby I take care of, so I do these videos when he sleeps, and sometimes he sleeps a long time, and sometimes he does not sleep very long at all, so this is going to be a short video, when we come back, we're going to launch back into, I guess we'll get rid of this card, since so we just did Cobras, discard, and we'll draw a card, we'll come back with the election, we're going to have the uh, NVA and the Arvin go first, Arvin will get to go first on election, and then we're going to keep, oh there's case on. Cool. We got lots of good stuff happening. Actually got the NBA involved. It's going to be like a really exciting round. So um, thanks for watching.